Good evening and welcome to Decision Point. I'm Ben Swan. I'll be with you for the next half hour. If you're at home right now and just tuning into the program, I want you to stop for just a quick second. I want you to pick up the phone and call somebody. Somebody in your life who, who needs to know about how God is moving in powerful ways. Uh, and, and regardless of what you think this program is about to be about, uh, I want you to call somebody and tell them to turn on this program right now because we believe that tonight and next week you're going to hear some remarkable things about the work that God is doing throughout the world. He's doing in countries where people are living under such great oppression. Uh, in the Middle East where Christians struggle to be able to profess their faith and to live their Christian lives. Uh, in the lives of so many people who are trapped uh, in belief systems that don't honor God uh, or that leave them wanting and longing and hoping uh, for a brighter future. Tonight you're going to meet Pastor David Daniel and he is working in the Middle East with the underground church there. We're going to tell you what we can about that. Some of what we're going to share with you is, is I guess the best term for it would be classified information, information that we can't give out to you for safety and security reasons. But you're going to hear some remarkable things. And we're also going to ask you over the next two weeks to pray diligently for the church in the Middle East, to pray diligently for how God would move in your life and in your heart to help the people there, the brothers and sisters there, who are struggling in their lives. So no further ado, let me introduce to you Pastor David Daniel. Thank you so much for coming in, all the way from the Middle East. Oh, my pleasure. We appreciate it. Also, uh, Pastor Warren Hoyt from Jesus Chapel West here in El Paso as well. Pastor, thank you for being here. Glad to be here. David, let's talk a little bit about uh, your story. There is so much to get into, and I want to start out with telling people a little bit about the underground church in the Middle East. What is it like right now, being a Christian in countries that are predominantly Muslim? They're not very happy about the fact that the church exists at all there, are they not? Actually, the story started when we got a martial law because of the circumstances there. We have a martial law in different countries uh, in the Middle East, many Muslim countries. As I lived in this country, I found a great b big boundaries, a big barriers cannot cross. You cannot evangelize. You cannot meet with a lot of people. When you go generally in the public churches above ground, which is in the streets, there are spies of the security police there, and this bother people. When any church just exists, but it's not active, there is no problem with the security police. But when the church became active, and the congregation increased, and a lot of people come, and this, uh, this bothers the security police because it's mainly based on Islam, Islamic uh, perspective and Islam is a problem in Islam, not with Muslims. So today I just need to differentiate between Islam. Islam is an ideology. We need just to think about it. But Muslims, as a people created on the image of God, they are my brothers, they are my sisters. I love Muslims very much. And just today, I need to speak to you, my, fri my Muslim friend. We love you. We don't want to be offensive to you anymore. We, we just need to speak to you by the love of Christ that Jesus told us to love all of people. If we are opposing them uh, if sorry if we are not in the same mind if we think in another philosophy not like them if we believe in another belief not like them but we love you very much when we are today here to express our love so returning to the security police they don't want any active church and they don't allow us to build a church. If you need just to paint, and this is obvious uh, for all people who follow this news, uh, uh, if you want just to, to paint at a restroom in a church, you need to take a permission from the president, which means that 15 years, I saw this by my eyes, more than 30 years, I work in this field. So, God lead us to go underground, what's called a uh, home, home cell or church cell, to because of the uh, uh, increasing numbers of believers, we, there is no new churches or few new churches which don't fulfill the increasing of the number of believers. So God push, uh, God lead us to go in an underground church. Tell me about this, this increasing number of believers. Uh, what, what, what are you seeing in the Middle East in terms of that growth? Is there a, a boom of people 
coming to this relationship with Jesus. Yeah, it's wonderful because it's totally different than geography. Geography tells people that this is a pure Muslim country. You can hardly find any Christians, but this is on the media. Christians will not come in the media and say, we are Christians. This is will lead them to persecution, but they are silent in their faith. They are just practicing their faith, happy with Jesus, but they will not come in the media or the security police and say that we are Christians. So they are increasing uh, amazingly because of the evangelism, because people pray for us, and we are also pray for our uh, area, Middle East, specifically some countries where Muslims do dominate and teach about Islam. It's like maybe like maybe Egypt, like be Saudi Arabia. I will not speak specifically, not to be offensive, but in Egypt and uh, Saudi Arabia, these. Uh, uh, two, two countries mainly spread and help Sunni Muslims to be evangelized all over the world. Mm -hmm. And in these two countries, there is a big boundaries for the spread of the gospel. And because of this, we go an underground church and uh, it's, um, it's growing amazing, uh, amazingly. For me, as a leader in the underground church, as a pastor in the underground church, I don't do a lot of effort. Trust me, I don't do a lot of effort. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is moving. I'm just uh, 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 receive many phone calls. Come and help us. I find people gathering in a, in a, in a, in a room like this, uh, 10 people, 15 people. Uh, would you like to teach us? Would you like to come and be our pastor? I said, oh, my pleasure. Then I send one of my helpers to teach them and help them. It's growing amazingly. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. No one can control it. Trust me. Trust me. Governments, devil, any uh, modern technology, cannot control underground it's it's beyond control you cannot it's uncontrollable loving jesus silent people teaching from a bible loving people in the society gathering other people to be evangelizing with people with love and gathering them to enter in the in a new group it sounds absolutely incredible um, uh, pastor warren t tell me about how you came uh, to know uh, pastor david and how that that relationship happened well, I actually just met him last night for the first time, and, um, but I had talked to him before, and the connection was made because he used to uh, uh, pastor and mentor a man that my church supports, uh, who is uh, from the same country, but is presently working in Iraq. So uh, because of that connection, because we're helping this other man, we heard about uh, uh, Pastor David and that he was coming through, and we just said, hey, it'd be great to have you come to our church and share. Have you been been surprised to hear some of these these amazing stories that he's telling about about the yeah. believers and what's happening with them there? Having been in some of the countries myself, uh, yeah, I sure am. And uh, you know, it's uh, such a difficult situation that I think sometimes as Americans, uh, as American Christians, uh, I might, I know for myself, I certainly want to be able to uh, endure whatever suffering or whatever the Lord may call me to, but I. <laughs> I uh, just wonder how I could do if I were under the similar uh, circumstances that they're under. But I think that that's an obvious uh, sign that it is the Holy Spirit that's causing the growth because people would not naturally choose this, mm -hmm. choose to accept Christ, choose a, a life that would um, uh, bring them persecution. But it's the Lord who's well, revealing himself to them. And as, as you describe that, I mean, as you're saying, choosing a life of persecution, choosing a, choosing a life of difficulty is, is one thing, and yet choosing what you know in your heart of hearts, the truth that you've maybe been seeking your, your entire life, nothing more natural uh, than, than finding the truth. That, well, yeah, but I mean, you know, it's naturally supernatural, isn't it? Because um, you can't explain it any other way. Uh, naturally speaking, no one would uh, choose a faith that would bring them into conflict with the government and neighbors and so on. But when, it, it, to me, it shows, it, it's just obvious that God works and reveals himself to them. And when you see who he really is, the beauty of the Lord, the superiority of the Christian life, you choose that. You, you say, hey, you know what? I don't, if, even if it costs me, even if I have to suffer, I choose this because I see that it's better. Pastor David, let me ask you about your tattoo. You, you have a, a tattoo on your wrist, and if you could hold it up so that we can see. Can you put it up high enough for them to see? 
I don't know if guys, you can zoom in on this. But I want you to tell us a little bit about the tattoo. Why the tattoo? What is it? What does it symbolize? What does it represent? It's it's a very painful uh, story about the time of persecution and and uh, under uh, many uh, Muslim governors. Of sure, my fr my Muslim friend. It's not all Muslims like this. The, he is just a, a a a type of Muslims who are injusts. But you guys, I I believe that many of you believing be, uh, wanted to look for the truth and want to know God, not like this guy. But this guy put an order over all Christians to carry a heavy chain, carrying a cross with their weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you have to carry a chain with 200 pounds uh, all, all your daily life. He pushed the door and check if they don't carry it in your home, he will take you to the prison. So people, because of friction, carrying this heavy chain, they got uh, b uh, uh, blue bone in their uh, neck here, in the back of their neck. So we call, they call us until today blue bones in our countries. And we make this a tradition to remind ourselves by a hard times that our fathers faced because of uh, their belief in Jesus. Incredible. So uh, this was this was a long time ago. This was in what? Maybe like uh, 1200, 1300 uh, after Christ. So 1280, there, this, this government official ordered that all Christians had to wear a chain with a cross on it, but the chain had to be equal to their body weight. Yeah, it's equal to their body weight and this makes put people in a, in, in a very hard situation and choice also either to choose to follow Jesus and carry the cross as written in a Bible, but this is literally today. Mm -hmm. Or you, you can go and uh, be a Muslim, so, uh, then you will be safe, there is no problem for you. You won't have to carry this yeah. burden. Yeah, burden, yeah. So yeah. today they, they don't make them carry the, the crosses the same way, but there is still the, that great persecution yeah. of saying life as a Muslim in these countries would be easier. Yeah. If you choose to be a Christian, life is difficult. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the interesting issue is they, they put the religion in our IDs. So just any uh, any Muslim can recognize us from our IDs. Just you can we when we go and apply for jobs, when we go and borrow money from the bank, when we go as a regular as a regular citizen in our countries, we go and is this the first question? Show me your ID. Then when in the clerks. Uh, sh uh, see our IDs. Okay, okay. This means that he recognizes that we are Christians. Then he will come. Uh, he will say to us, uh, uh, three days we will call you. Th then you will have a job. Uh, three days in Indian means never. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So three days. Okay. So when we he go back, he uh, uh, her, his parents ask him, what's the answer? He said three days. We sh we laugh. We know that this is. We are, there is no jobs, there is no money, there is no uh, 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 good chances for all regular citizens have. And this is the time, and we have uh, our ex-president, he swear that if he stay longer, uh, uh, forward, 10 years governing, he swear on this, that he will humiliate, degrade the Christians, and he will only allow two categories of Christians, show polishers, uh, sh show polishers and rubbish collectors. Only two categories of Christians that they allow to work in. But after he swore, by one month, he had been assassinated. In, his, in, in a big military show, he had been assassinated after one month only. Wow. God is in control. Tell me about the organization that you work with. Because it, 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 more than just trying to exist in these countries, there is work being done to try to create something and provide help for people who are in need. And you, you work with an organization. Tell me a little bit about the organization. And I'm going to let you know at home, if you're listening to this and you're saying, I don't completely follow what they're saying, a lot of important details are being left out. For the, for the safety and the security of the people involved. So that may be why you have difficulty following this. Uh, but tell me about the organization, the work that you're doing, and, and why you're doing it. God blessed us in the beginning of 2008 by uh, going uh, to help 2 million homeless kids in my country. 
and it's a, it's a, it's a big challenge to help them because two million homeless, two kids. Million homeless kids. Yes, yes, and this uh, number of homeless kids, because of a highest divorce rate, and there is no uh, uh, there is no help, official help from the government. The kids after divorce just throw out in the street. Mm. And in the street, you can find a lot of kids sleeping on the gardens. Uh, you can find the kids who is five years old sl sleep in a garden. So our hearts... Let me, let me stop you for a second. Because okay. for, for people who are watching this, especially for an American audience, yeah. that doesn't make sense. Yeah. You have a divorce, yeah. and then the kids are just thrown out? Yeah, because uh, the government don't care about any divorce case like here. We have a complete different world. But why don't the parents care for those children? Because the parents are looking for to, to remarry. The divorce rate, because it's, it's, uh, um, look the image of God, which he created one man for one woman. This is the image of God as written in a Bible. Right. So the devil wants, w the devil which controls our country the Antichrist spirit which controls our country, try to break this equality and make a man, you can marry more than one wife, it's allowable for you to marry four wives. And this is not logic. And this is against our nature. Against, you cannot go in love with two women. This is against the nature. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. Please, my audience, stop and think. I, I know that they may be against your belief, but stop and think in front of your conscience, please, please in front of your conscience, think in that you, can, you are now going against your nature and think to love another woman and it's allowable for you to love four women and to marry four women. How is this? How is this? Please, you will be judged one day in front of God. You will be responsible about this message today. Please think in your conscience. So returning back to our story, this, this uh, two divorced men and, and, and women, mm -hmm. they, they go and look for another uh, partner mm -hmm. for their life. Mm -hmm. So the other partner don't like these kids. So what's the destiny? I saw, I saw by my eyes in one of the towns in front of a judge, a wife and a husband, and uh, a kid in the, in the middle. And the judge said, who will take the child? The man pushed the child to his, to his wife. Uh, the husband pushed the child to his wife. And uh, the wife said, oh, no, I don't like him. So they pushed the child again to his father. After some times of pushing, I saw this by my eyes.